Namaste. We are in the midst of one very severe wave which is spreading all over the world. It is an epidemic becoming a pandemic now by name of COVID-19. It is really unprecedented and very large number of people all over the world are getting affected by it. And this being primarily a respiratory pathogen, it is starting with the lungs, even though it is affecting rest of the body and other organs as well. We have seen it in the rest of the part of the world that people are getting admitted with very severe respiratory failures, needing support of ventilators or artificial breathing for them to tide over the crisis. In India, luckily, we are on the different timeline and we have got time to think about it and be prepared about it. India being a huge country of 1.3 billion and ventilators being available to the tune of 40,000 only. We really have to be prepared to have more and more machines. The government has appealed this to various sectors and entrepreneurs are coming up to develop such machines. But while developing such machines, even though it is quite an encouraging thing, we have to know that we are dealing with something very delicate like diseased lungs. When respiratory failure takes place in COVID-19, lungs are very, very traumatized. So traumatized lungs or the lungs which are inflamed are very delicate and like a baby lung, out of the whole lungs, only one fourth of the part may be involved in the gas exchange. So we have to decide how much volume is to be delivered, at what pressure it is to be delivered. Because if that is wrong, that itself can cause worsening of inflammation in the lungs. So while using a machine like ventilators for such patients to maintain their own oxygenation and removal of carbon dioxide, it is not a mechanical thing which is very, very simple because lung is a biological organ. And whenever anything from outside is intervening the functioning of the lung from the point of view of supporting the lung also, biological responses are observed. And if it is not helping the lung, understanding what stage the lung is in, then it can be counterproductive. Because if patient is trying to breathe in, and the machine is trying to exhale or it is a mismatch, then there can be very severe work of breathing or wastage of energy from the point of view of patient or the pressures in the circuit can build very high causing barotrauma or pressure related trauma to the patient. So all these things need synchronization with the patient's requirements. So when patient is breathing in, the machine needs to know how much and what type of breath is to be given, for example. Basically, all the lungs which require ventilatory support are not the same. For example, anesthetic ventilation is very short and in normal lungs. Whereas respiratory failure in COVID or in ARDS as it is called, it is very, very different. Patient may be in totally different spectrum of the disease, different stage of the disease, different severity of the disease. And the people who are handling the ventilator like us and the machine itself has to be sensitive enough to understand the requirement of the patient in that particular stage and the machine has to match. So with this background, we are trying to make this video to make non-medical people understand that what are the requirements of such machines and how should we produce or choose such machines. I myself am Dr. Prachi Sathe, Director of ICU at Ruby Hall Clinic. Hi, I'm Dr. Tanima Baronia. I'm in charge of the ICU in Ruby Hall Clinic. Now, uh, continuing with the, what Dr. Prachi has explained about the ventilator. Now, the ventilator can serve us in various methods depending upon what we need from the ventilator based on the lung condition. Now, broadly, the mechanisms of ventilation can be classified into something known as mandatory ventilation, where the breath itself is initiated by the ventilator and the entire breath is completed by the ventilator. Then we have something called as assisted mandatory ventilation, where the breath is initiated by the patient, but it gets completed by the ventilator. And then you have something called as spontaneous breathing, where the breath is initiated and it is completed by the patient, but throughout the breath, the ventilator assists the patient in doing so. Now, keeping in mind 
uh, ARDS and what could be the requirement of this patient, let's start with mandatory ventilation. So like I already said, in mandatory ventilation, the breath will be started by the ventilator and the entire breath is completed by the ventilator. Now, there could be two modalities with which you can ventilate this patient by controlled methods. So the first one is volume control. As uh, the name itself suggests, volume control is all about deciding how much of volume you wish to give to the patient. So that is tidal volume, the amount of volume that will be pumped into the lung in a single breath. That is what is decided by the doctor treating the patient on the machine. Like for your example, we have 500 ml that has been decided. So this has been preset. Now, every time this ventilator gives an inspiration, it will try and deliver this 500 ml of tidal volume in that particular breath. But there's also a flip side to it. Like Dr. Prachi has already explained that ARDS lung is not a normal lung. It is an incompliant lung. It is an injured lung. It is a sick lung. And like Dr. Prachi explained, there is no uniformity in the disease in, uh, in the lung per se. So it could be patchy involvement of the lung where different areas re respond differently to the amount of oxygen or to the amount of gases that are delivered to the patient. So what becomes important is that in an incompliant lung, 500 ml will cause the pressures to rise to a certain degree. But whether it is safe to allow the pressure to rise that much needs to always be kept in mind. And so when we give a certain amount of volume with volume control, we need to monitor the pressures as to what is happening. Like you can see here, there is peak pressure that is being seen. And you can also see something known as the plateau pressure. And uh, the plateau pressure gives us an idea about what is happening at the alveolar level or at the lung parenchyma level and we have to ensure that this plateau pressure does not rise above 30 centimeters of water failing which we might be responsible for injuring the lung further like Dr. Prachi already explained you can have things like volume trauma or barotrauma and this trauma has far-reaching consequences because every time the lung is injured further certain inflammatory molecules are released by the lung and this spreads throughout the body and can be responsible for further organ damages in distant parts of the body. So as I've explained in volume control, it is very important to monitor the pressures, the peak pressures and more importantly the plateau pressures. Now let's come to the other modality of controlled ventilation and that is pressure control. So what do we do when pressure control? We set the pressure limits on the ventilator. Which by which we mean, like for example here, we have pressure control above PEEP. Now I'll explain the concept of PEEP later, but as you can see, pressure control above PEEP. So you set a pressure of 13 centimeters of water above PEEP level in this situation. And here what you are deciding is that you will not allow the pressures in the lung to go above this particular pressure that you've set. And within these limits, the ventilator is expected to deliver a certain volume. So which automatically tells you that if the pressure has been limited, you need to be able to monitor and get an adequate feedback from your ventilator as to what is the volume that is being delivered to the patient. Because just like not allowing the pressures to go above a certain limit is important, it is also equally important to be able to deliver a certain amount of volume so as to maintain effective oxygenation as well as ventilation. By ventilation, I mean removal of the CO2. So these are the things which need adequate monitoring and you need a good feedback from your ventilator, failing which you might be responsible for not being able to adequately uh, oxygenate or ventilate the patient as I've already explained. Now there's something also known as PEEP. What is PEEP? It is the positive end expiratory pressure. Let me explain it in simple language. What does PEEP mean? It means that certain amount of volume is allowed to remain in the lung so that the lung doesn't completely collapse at the end of expiration. 
and that means when you allow a certain volume to stay a certain amount of pressure will be maintained within the lung now why is this important it is because every time the lung expands and you allow it to completely collapse a larger volume and a larger pressure will be required to reopen this lung and every time you use larger pressures it is likely to traumatize the lung further so ARDS the main stay of ventilatory strategy is known as lung protective strategy whatever we do should be directed towards protecting the lung and preventing further injury now how does peep help like i've said the peep keeps the the lung inflated to a certain extent so that at any given time the lung is slightly open and that makes it easier for the lung to open further with the next inspiration failing which like i've already explained that various cytokines and inflammatory markers may be released and which will not only injure the lung but may also injure other organ systems so we've already gone through controlled that is mandatory modes of ventilation now i'll be explaining regarding another mode of ventilation which is called a support mode so the basic bare bone support mode which is available in most ventilators is a pressure support mode so what we're talking about here between support modes and mandatory modes is that in a mandatory mode the ventilator is basically in charge although the patient does start the ventilation how i will explain but the ventilator sets how fast and how much breathing is being done in pressure support however you set a basic support peep as ma'am explained it earlier and a support mode and the ventilation is decided how fast and uh, when to start the breath is decided by the patient now this is a support mode which is used when the patient is getting better and the mandatory ventilation is no longer required so in this mode what happens is that if the patient does not breathe then the ventilator does not initiate but we have a safety feature in that after a certain period of apnea that is the patient not breathing the ventilator automatically cycles to one of the mandatory modes about which we explained earlier now how does the ventilator know when the patient is breathing so for that we use a feature called a trigger trigger is how the patient's breathing effort is translated and detected by the ventilator you have flow two kinds of triggers one is a flow trigger and one is a pressure trigger a flow trigger means that the patient is trying to take a breath and this generates a flow and this flow is detected by the ventilator on the other hand a pressure trigger is the same thing when the patient tries to generate a breath a pressure drop is produced and this is again detected by the ventilator now we can see it more clearly in a mandatory control mode so what i am doing here is i am using this artificial lung to generate a trigger now when i am triggering like this like simulating a patient breathing you can see that on the ventilator on the ventilator parameters you can see that a new pink color is appearing which is detecting that the patient is trying to breathe so that is basically how the ventilator detects that the patient is trying to breathe now aside from all the settings that we have explained in any mode of ventilation you need to ensure that the patient is not harmed for that you need the ventilator to alarm you when there is something going wrong for that alarm uh, settings are mandatory in any modes we have to monitor at least these four parameters as in pressures whether the patient is getting a too high a pressure in his airway the minute volume meaning the amount of air that is going into the patient in each minute uh, the respiratory rate whether it's too high or too low and also the peep or the end expiratory pressure which we mentioned earlier i would also like to bring to your notice one more parameter which is called as inspiratory and expiratory ratio each respiratory cycle has got two components inspiration and expiration which is normally 1 as to 2 to 1 as to 3 and this also needs good ventilator to realize it and to be able to change it according to the requirements of the patient sometimes we need to make it as 1 as to 1 or sometimes even inverse ratio as we call it like 2 as to 1 because that helps to improve the gas exchange in the lungs so if you could see over here if presently it is going 1 as to 2 and if i need to change it inverse ratio you could notice that inspiration is longer than expiration if i am increasing inspiration more you would realize it 
that how inspiration is being longer than the expiration. Just take it once again. So, coming to the end of this, it is very important that there has to be a good gas supply to this machine to run and this needs oxygen, compressed oxygen and compressed air. Sometimes at remote places, compressed air may not be available. In that situation, the machines will have inbuilt compressor or turbo mechanism which is going to draw air from atmosphere and pressurize it and deliver. So, pressurized gas source is very important because sometimes we may need to give less oxygen like 20% or sometimes we may need to give 100% oxygen also to the lung which is unable to maintain oxygenation for that particular patient. So, these are the basic minimum requirements for a ventilatory machine which is going to cater to a traumatized or injured lung or inflamed lung like in ARDS especially COVID-19 type of respiratory failure. So, it is very important that the machines have evolved over the years with understanding of changes in pathophysiology of a patient. Over the last 25 years, more and more nuances have been known by the scientists and their research and the machines have actually tried to comply or support with those and that is how we have started getting better and better outcomes from the patients suffering from respiratory failure. It is very important to rem remember that artificial ventilation is not the cure in itself. It is only going to help us tide over the crisis or it is only a bridge towards the recovery of the lungs. But till the time the rec lungs recover, the patient recovers, the machines are going to take care of very vital parameters of the patient. Thank you.